Okay, now let's talk about curved refraction. But before we do that, let's go back and talk about mirrors one more time. So that we could take a flat mirror like this, and then we could bend it. And there's two possible shapes. We could bend it and turn it into a concave mirror, or we could bend it and we could turn it into the convex mirror. So in theory, we could take a flat piece of glass. So this is the sideways view of a flat piece of glass, and we could bend it into a lens, but we don't do that. So instead, we're gonna shave it. And so there are two shapes that we can shave this piece of glass into so that we could shape it into something that looks like this. So that's going to be a converging lens. Or we could shape it like this, and then that's going to turn out to be a diverging lens. So let's see what it does to light. So let's go back up here to the mirror. And if light is coming in in this direction, then what the concave mirror did was it would bounce and it would go through the focus. So this would be the focus over here. On the other hand, light coming in like this would bounce off the mirror like this. So notice that this is converging the light using reflection. This one is diverging the light using reflection. So the converging lens is going to do what to the light? It's going to converge it. So the light's going to be coming in like this. It's going to go through the lens, and it's going to go through the focal point. So notice that the focal point is on this side of a lens, but it's on this side of the mirror. Now, it also has a focal length on this side over here, and I'll show it to you here in a moment. But this is the important one, the one on this side. So the light's going to come through it, and then when it hits the lens, it's going to go through it like that. And then when the light comes in like this, it's going to bend it and make it go through like that. So it's converging the light. So this is the type of lens that you might set fires with or you might kill ants with. Don't, so don't kill ants. But you might have taken sunlight and passed it through a magnifying glass and then notice you could bring the light to a point and it, that light can get so intense it can catch things on fire. Don't catch things on fire. So don't sue me. All right, then over here, we have light that's coming in from this direction, okay? And when it gets to the diverging lens, it's going to shoot off in that direction and that direction. But we could carry the line. Let me do it in a different color. We could take this line and make it go backwards and make it go backwards and so it would have a focus over here. So this one had a focus on this side of the lens. This one has a focus on this side of the lens. Uh, let's go back up to here. So if we were to take this line and make it go backwards and take that line and make it go backwards, this one has a focus. So the point is, anything you can do with the mirror, you can do with a lens. So we can control which way does the light go by using different kinds of lenses and different kinds of mirrors. So that's the, the four major kinds of, of things that are used in optical instruments to determine where the light is going to go. OK, now the next thing I wanted to mention is we can actually predict the location of the image geometrically and by using a formula. So this should look familiar. All right, so take a look at that picture. 
that shows where the image I is going to be located at if you are using either a diverging lens or a converging lens. Now let's compare that picture to this one which was for the mirror and you notice the two pictures use pretty much the same lines in order to locate where the image is at. Now the rules are going to be slightly different so let's go back to here and there's only one of those three pictures that I want you to be able to reproduce if you're one of my students. And that is going to be for the converging lens. So let's take a look at the converging lens. We're going to draw a horizontal line. We are going to straddle the horizontal line with our converging lens. Okay, then we're going to have a object. So here's my candle. So that's my O for object and it's going to be outside the focal point. So a lens we said had a focal point over here but it also has a focal point and it's going to be the same distance on this side over here. Now that's assuming that you have a symmetrical lens. It's possible, we're not going to do it, but it's possible that you could have a lens that would be shaped like this. So you see how it's, it's not the same curvature on either side. And so this one is a symmetrical one and it has a, this, the focal length on both sides at the same distance. This one would not. So let's forget about that. So let's just look at this one here. Our rules are going to be a horizontal line goes through the lens and then it has to go through the focus. So let's make a horizontal line. It has to hit the lens, so you remember that this thing needs to go at least up to here so that it intercepts the light. But let's assume it does. It then goes through the focus. Now notice that that's different than when we did the mirror. So when we did the mirror, the horizontal line, when it hit the lens, or hit the mirror up here, it, it bounced off of it and went through the focus that was on this side. Notice this time it's going through this one. Okay, then what's our second rule? The second rule says that a line to the middle of the lens goes straight through it. So that's going to be, let's switch colors here. And so that's going to be this one. Here's the center of the lens. And so I'm going to make a line that goes through the center of the lens and it just keeps on going. So it doesn't change direction. And then where these two lines come together, that's going to be the candle. So here is the image I produced by it. I would want you to be able to do that on the exam. I'll give you a ruler. I'll give you paper. You need to measure uh, where the focal length is. You need to make your lens. You need to make the horizontal lines. So make, you need to be able to make this picture on the exam. Uh, but I did want you just to look at the other two pictures and see if you can spot the horizontal line and it bounces and goes through the, the focal length and then the one that goes through the center and then it, it's unaffected. Uh, there is a simulation that you can use and so it's called concave and convex lenses found at www.ophysics.com. So if you would go to that you can manipulate where the candle is and then you can see how the image gets larger and smaller and actually can flip right side up or upside down. Notice this is upside down so it will always be upside down for this particular configuration. You'll notice that in the pictures 
sometimes it can flip it and it turns out to be right side up. Well, if we can draw the location of the image, I wonder if we could calculate mathematically where the image is going to be. And yes, we can. So here's our formula. 1 over F equals 1 over O plus 1 over I. Does that look familiar? It should, because if we go back, there it is. So we use exactly the same formula for both mirrors and lenses. Now you're not going to have to do this one on the exam, but you should be able to do this one for a lens. So F is going to be the focus of the lens, and we use a positive F if it's a converging lens, and then we use a negative F if it's a diverging lens. Uh, o is going to be the object, and we use a positive O if it's in front of the lens, and a negative O if it's behind the lens. And then I is going to be the image, and we use a positive I if it's behind the lens, and a negative I if it's in front of the lens. Now the good news is uh, the one that you're going to do on the exam is going to be this one here, which means that the image is going to be in front of the lens here, and it's going to be outside the focal length, and this is going to be a converging lens. So let's try it. So an object is going to be placed six centimeters in front of a converging lens with, that has a focal length of four centimeters. Where will the image be located at? So first, we're going to write down what are we given. So we're given O, which is six centimeters, we're given the focal length, which is the letter F, that's four centimeters. We're looking for I, where's the image? So select the formula that connects the letters. So we're going to plug in our numbers into the 1 over F equals 1 over O plus 1 over I formula. And then we need to solve it for the letter I. And it turns out to be 12. Notice it's a positive 12. So that means it's behind the lens. So that's this situation right here. The object is in front of a converging lens. The image is on this side over here. Does that look familiar? Have we used a formula that was 1 over something equals 1 over something plus 1 over something? Do you remember when we did electricity and we talked about resistors? and we had resistors in parallel, okay? So when resistors were in parallel, it was one over the total resistance equals one over resistor one plus one over resistor two. So if you remember how to do those problems, then this should be no problem doing this here. Gotta be careful because you have to remember to be flipping the numbers over and then when you get to your final number, so 1 over i equals 0 0.08. You gotta flip that. So 1 over 0 0.0833, that's equal to 12. So don't forget to flip at the very end of the question. Okay, let's take a break. When we come back, let's talk about rainbows.